There we go. <clears throat> That's fine. That'll be fine. All right. Okay. Okay, well, I just need to just delete this then. I need to just delete this. This whole app right here. <laughs> this isn't working anymore. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry for the long wait. Sorry I'm late. I'm late all day today, apparently. <clears throat> yeah, I'm late. Sorry about that. Today was not a very pleasant day for me apparently because I woke up late I uploaded the video late I got myself together late but I did want to do a live stream today which is also late um I guess before I before we talk about anything I don't even really know what I'm going to talk about today, so when people come in, uh, we can have some conversation about some stuff, but until then, I'm just going to say, firstly, uh, welcome to the live stream. I know I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm late. Uh, secondly, I did finish the vocal recordings of the what is woke video so uh the weird look on my face is because i'm still not done <laughs> vocal recordings I, I think i have like one or two things that i have to re-record uh for that video that's one number two is that because i finished the vocal recordings the video is gonna be like an hour 
and 30 something minutes long. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, I don't want it to go to two hours, but there's a lot of explanation and a lot of stuff that I said in that video. So uh, I'm not going to get rid of it. Some of it I may have to cut down, but um, it's still going to be an hour. It's not a lot, not a lot that I have to cut down. <clears throat> Ooh. But yes, I'm late. I'm late today for everything. I'm late waking up. I'm late uploading my video, my shiny, shiny Saturday video. I'm late doing the live stream. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. So, sorry about that. Nevertheless, welcome. Uh, I did want to just talk to you guys about some K-pop stuff. Uh, whatever you guys want to talk about. I have no particular thing to talk about. I do kind of want to say something about, like, free speech being attacked as far as, like, Israel and Palestine thing is concerned. But I don't know if I'm going to talk about that or not. I mainly would just want to talk about K-pop stuff. So, in my channel, I, I promise you, this channel is not about political stuff. I try my best to stay away from that stuff. But political stuff keeps getting thrown into K-pop. And so, it kind of forces me to talk about it. Because people are making K-pop a political thing when it's not supposed to be. Um, you know, calling people fat phobic is political. Regardless of what people think, uh, calling people ist phobe of any kind is political. It's that's it's based on political ideology. I I wish that that wasn't in K-pop. I really do, um, but it is. It just is what it is. But yeah, I I want to talk to you guys about some stuff. So, <clears throat> Taemin, you know, everybody's talking about Taemin leaving SM and all that other stuff, and. I don't know where the speculation of the Big Planet Made thing came from entirely, but a lot of people have been speculating that he's going to Big Planet Made. I don't know why. Uh, a lot of people speculated that Beckham convinced him to leave SM. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What I did not know was that Big Planet Made was, if I'm not mistaken, founded by the guy... MC, MC, MC Mong, or whatever his name is, the guy that was trying to evade military service by pulling his teeth out and then claiming that he had some kind of, uh, disease or something weird like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he pulled his teeth out and he was trying to avoid military service because of that. And people called him out on it, which I'm surprised he founded a company after all that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's some stuff I want to talk about. Um, the thing is that we're more certain about where Taman is going or that he is going somewhere. The person we're not so certain about is Onu. Where is he going to go after all this stuff, you know, happens? Where is he going to go? What's he going to do? I mean, of course, they're going to still be in Shiny, obviously. Shiny's not, you know, going anywhere, but I'm still curious as to what Oni's plans are. And I know they haven't been revealed yet, but speculation is is welcome as to where he could be going, what he what his next moves are. Obviously new management, but we don't know where. So I'm very curious about that. Um <clears throat> This might be a sensitive topic. Felix, uh, not just Felix, but there's other people as well, other idols that have had to apologize for, I don't know, showing a Coca-Cola bottle uh, that they were drinking because Coca-Cola supports the Israel craziness. Um, do you think he should have apologized? Do you think, I mean, because I know people were offended by that, even though... It's Coca-Cola, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't thinking about 
the Israel Palestine thing, and I I know that people want people people want idols to be more aware of political stuff, while also claiming that K-pop idols should not be involved in political stuff or even you know give opinions, especially the companies. But uh, JYP is actually probably the center of this conflict the most because he supports coca-cola and all these other things that support the israel craziness and so um and yes it is genocide in my opinion it's an opinion but i i believe it's genocidal uh for them to do what they're doing um i do want to say this and i was gonna wait till people came in but i'm not gonna wait because who knows when that's going to happen. I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. I am a Bible-believing person, okay? I do believe that Israel is God's chosen people. However, I do not believe that just because Israel is God's chosen people that they have a right to do whatever they want. If I see something that they do wrong, I'm going to say it's wrong. And it is wrong for Israel to bomb schools. It is wrong for Israel to do this. If your target is Hamas target Hamas. Don't target everywhere around Hamas. And I'm sure Hamas is just sitting there laughing while people, innocent people, are getting uh, or their lives are being taken away. So, yeah, you're not helping anyone. You're not solving any problems by bombing schools and bombing innocent, uh, innocent lives, really. Teachers, students, none of them asked for this. None of them asked for this. You know, a lot of Israeli, innocent Israelis are, are being, you know, their lives are being taken away. But a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Palestinian lives have been lost as well. And the, the I'm trying to use PG-13 words because of YouTube, but for lack of a better way of saying, the death toll on the Palestinian side is way heavier than the Israeli side just saying um but with that said i have this weird feeling about idols apologizing for showing a coca-cola bottle because of um people feeling some type of way about it um i don't think that you y'all know that these idols don't mean no harm when they when they do stuff like this you know they don't um unless they literally are trying to promote the israeli crazy miss on purpose then yeah but i guess because people don't know whether or not idols are doing it to promote it or just doing it and not knowing or doing it not thinking about it that's why these idols have to apologize i'm guessing perhaps which is i get i, I understand but at the same time it's like it's it's Coca-Cola, he's drinking it, you know, not everybody that's drinking Coca-Cola on a live stream supports the Israel stuff. I mean, yes, financially, he probably supported it without really thinking about it because he did buy the Coca-Cola, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, not everybody is, I'll put it this way, not everyone that drinks Coca-Cola or supports Coca-Cola, the brand, not all of them are in a monolith. And if we don't want people to view race and gender and sexuality as a monolith, we shouldn't expect, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't view people that drink certain product brands that support Israel as a monolith as well. Not everybody is that way. I feel like we're not really giving a lot of grace to both the left and the right in, in politics. We don't give grace to people in politics like that anymore. Um, we don't have conversations like that anymore. We don't give any kind of space for understanding the other side anymore. Felix could have just wanted to drink Coca-Cola that day, so he got Coca-Cola and drank it. it. has nothing to do with the Israel-Palestine thing. And I'm not going to sit here and say that he's wrong for drinking that. I don't. I feel like it's a part of a parasocial relationship thing as well. That 
you know, you're my, you're, you're my idol and you're my, you're the person that I, I look, look to and that you're drinking. I'm an Israeli and if you're, and you're drinking a Coca-Cola, that's offensive to me and, you know, you should be more aware and this, that, and the other. It's kind of a parasocial thing, I feel like. But, um, like I said, I understand the conflict very, very well. I do. I know, I know what's going on in Israel and, and Gaza and everything. But I don't think that everybody that's supporting the companies that they're supporting as far as Coca-Cola and um, I think what McDonald's or whatever, I don't think that they're all doing it with the intention of backing Israel. Um, so I, I do think we should give people a little bit of grace and not judge people based on them drinking a Coca-Cola bottle. You know, that's all I'm saying. Um, that said, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. He did apologize as well, but I feel like I, like I, like I said, I feel a, a, some type of way about him apologizing because we don't want people apologizing K-pop for dating. We don't want people to apologize in K-pop in for a lot of things. That's, you know, but because of the sensitivity of what's going on in Israel and Palestine, he's apologizing on behalf of the people who were hurt as a result of seeing the Coca-Cola bottle. Of seeing it. And I'm just like, there's a part of me that just doesn't like that. So please understand that's kind of how I feel about that. I don't think people should be constantly apologizing for just drinking a beverage and not really... You know, they don't, yes, they, they should be aware of what's going on, but at the same time, we don't want K-pop and politics to mix, right? So then why do we constantly keep throwing politics in, in their faces every time they do something or they show something brand-wise? So it's like, I don't like the idea of politics and K-pop mixing like this, but we have, you know, feminism, uh, rising up in, in K-pop with the girl groups, members and things like that. And people are, are cheering and championing that on. But then some people don't like it. And they're like, you know, feminism is bad, which I I think I'm going to do a, a K2 video talking about the roots of feminism. Uh, there's some interesting things that a lot of people may not know about it. And I'm looking into it. I'm gonna. I'm going to look into it after the woke video. Okay, let me let me be let me be very clear. Uh, I had some trouble, which is why you only saw I don't know two two K-pop reaction videos this week. I meant to do more, and I actually still have those recorded, and they're going to be edited and released next week. But I had some trouble with CapCut this week because I was trying to do three projects at once. And because of that, my cap cut kind of that will start acting stupid. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to delete a project. So I deleted a K-pop topic that I had already had finished. I just had to edit all the extra stuff into it, you know. But I deleted it because I was like, the woke video is way more important than this other video that I'm doing. So I, I had to delete it, and then everything started acting smoothly, running smoothly. So I was like, "Fine, I'm I'm kind of sad, uh, but it had to be done." So I'm trying to make sure I remember to not overwork myself when it comes to, or overbook myself when it comes to content. Sure, I want I want my cape. Two videos to outweigh my reactions because my reactions are copyright claimed all of them just about and so I want to balance the copyright claim videos out with the ones that are not so K2 videos that's one of the one of the reasons why I do them another reason is because I have things to talk about and things to say about certain topics that um, <clears throat> a lot of my Viewpoints and opinions are unpopular, unfortunately, but then fortunately, because now, because they are unpopular and I'm talking about them, we can talk about them more and then they can become a huge topic. 
of discussion. And a lot of the things that I say are unpopular because people don't like to view things in the way that people like me view them, especially the black K-pop community, which I've been addressing a lot lately. <laughs> to my detriment, because black K-pop community that doesn't view things the way I view it, don't like what I say. And some of them probably hate me. It is what it is. That's what happens when you do uh, stuff on YouTube. But my life is not online. My life is in the real world where things make more sense. Uh, in the world where there's green grass and trees and there's a blue sky, you know, that, that world. I live in that world. I don't live online. So I'm trying to do my best to not reply to every comment that, you know, questions it. And if I reply, I reply via a video. And that's how I'm going to try to do this. Okay? That's how I'm going to try to do this. I got enough s crazy comments from the colorism video. Yeah, I'm probably going to get more comments from the What is Woke video because that is literally... Some people might view that as a direct attack on them. And it's not. It's not. It's not an attack. I'm just saying that I want people to think for themselves. That's the whole point of the video is I want people to... I'm going to present to you what I believe and what I know to be true. And I'm going to let you decide for yourself at the end. That's what I want to do. I want you to decide for yourself. But I'm not going to be beholden to people who want me to view things their way. I'm here now. What did I miss? Nothing much. I literally just started my YouTube video like 22 minutes ago. So you didn't miss much. I was just... I'm briefly going over uh, me being late. I was late. <laughs> I was late on my uh, live stream. And I was late uploading my Chinese Saturday video. And I was late waking up in the morning. I was late for everything. Uh, so I was like kind of talking about that. And I was also talking about the that I, well this is a controversial i'm sure topic but i was i was also talking about felix and i don't think that felix and other k-pop idols who are just drinking a certain beverage that i know the brand supports israel in what they're doing which is i just i can't get behind supporting israel but if i want to drink a coca-cola I should have the right to go and drink a coca-cola without people labeling anti anti-semite on me or whatever because I'm drinking a Coca-Cola. I'm not I'm not I'm not drinking it to support Israel. I'm drinking it because I want a Coca-Cola. Now that said I don't drink soda at all. I I can't. I don't drink it. It's not good for my health. I don't like it. So I, I plan on living longer on the earth. Um may lead to shut down the app. Hopefully and then there's something I forgot to do already because I'm getting a notification on my thing, my live stream, saying that I have insufficient memory. I should have deleted a lot of the stuff that I have. My fault. I should have did that before doing the live stream, but it is what it is. Hopefully it doesn't cut off. If it does, I'll just uh, delete the memory stuff and then hop back on the live. So hopefully you guys can join me again. And uh, my apologies for not doing that earlier. My fault. But yeah, I was talking about that, and I just don't think that Felix... You know, we. I don't think that politics and K-pop should be in the same space, basically. I understand that uh, people were hurt or felt some type of way by, by Felix drinking a Coca-Cola or whatever, and that he had to apologize. I understand. I do. However... He has a right to drink a Coca-Cola without being called a racial thing, an ist, or whatever, an anti-Semitism, an anti-Semite, or however they call it. That is not, that's not okay, okay? And I don't think that he should have had to apologize um, because people shouldn't take it, people shouldn't take that to heart. <clears throat> even Israelis, I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, my voice, 
even I, I don't even think the Israelis should take that to heart, even though I understand why. But it's just sometimes I think we take things way too far. He's just drinking a Coca Cola, and I understand that you're you're offended by that because Coca Cola is a brand that supports Israel. I get it, but I don't think that we should take it that seriously. And this is a problem with parasocial relationships as well. Is that we we really hammer down on our idols when they do something that we don't like, even though they're not trying to offend anyone by doing that. I I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, we we want our idols to apologize when they're dating someone. We want their idol. We want our idols to apologize. Well, I'll put it this way: we not 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 we that we don't want really not you and me, Chinese Nuna. We don't want our idols to apologize for dating. That should be normalized, right? Dating should be normalized. But pe the they want their idols to apologize for everything, including drinking a Coca Cola. And I think that that is that's wrong. Unless they support Israel and they make their intentions known, which they're not, which I understand that is why people are like, I don't know whether he's for Israel or against Israel or whether he just wanted to drink Coca-Cola. It's not why I don't realize. I don't think we should be trying to figure out who's for Israel or who's against Israel, if I'm being honest. Okay. Drinking a Coca-Cola does not determine whether a person is for or against or who they are as a person or their character or anything. Um, so I just don't, you know, drinking a Starbucks does not determine whether a person is for or against Israel. Maybe they just, it's more convenient, like, if they work there. Uh, I just, I just don't, I don't, ideal should never... Ideal should never apologize for anything unless they have done something actually wrong or illegal. Thank you. Exactly. That's what, and that's how I feel. Unless they've done something illegal, then apologize. You shouldn't have to apologize for drinking a Starbucks coffee. Like, scenario, what if you work across from Starbucks and that's the only coffee area that you get your coffee from in the morning? Well, yeah, I'm going to go there and get my coffee, Right? And I'm not thinking about the Israel thing. I just want my coffee. Why can't people just want their coffee? It's like people have to constantly put labels on everyone that does something they don't like. And I don't like that. That is, you're not, we don't give people grace in politics anymore to just like what they like and dislike what they dislike. We don't give grace in politics anymore to discuss things. We just say, okay, based on what you did or based on my interpretation of what you said, you are an anti-Semite or you are a racist or you are a sexist or you are homophobic or you are all these fat, fat, phobiotic, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's always this now. We're always slapping labels on people instead of understanding where they're coming from. And see and listening to what they're saying and not trying to misconstrue their their words or their intentions for drinking a Coca-Cola. So I don't think Felix should apologize for that. I just don't. It almost feels like he's apologizing for their feelings being hurt. Actually, that's literally what he's doing. Apologizing for their feelings being hurt. Not apologizing for what he did, because what he did wasn't wrong. Um politics have no place in K-pop or anywhere else. Thank you. I I agree. Politics have no place in K-pop. They have no place in movies. I don't want to watch... The American Society of Magical Negroes is one of the most racist movies I've ever heard about. I've heard about it. I haven't watched it, but I've heard about it. And I've seen the, com the advertisement commercial. And literally what the commercial is saying is what the movie's about. I've heard other people talk about what the movie's about as well. Um, people say that you should not give critiques on a movie that you have not seen. But if I've heard from someone who's telling me what the movie's about, should I assume that they're lying about it? Yeah, I should see the movie for myself. But 
if the advertisement of the movie is blatantly telling you that this is a racist movie and someone tells me what I already know common sense wise why do I need to watch the whole movie just to I'm not going to waste like an hour or two of my life to watch a movie that I already know is racist against white people because that's what that's what the American Society of Magical Negroes is. It's racist against white people. White people are problematic. We, we, we of the American Society of Magical Negroes have the power bestowed upon us by whatever to calm white people down so that they don't become a problem for blacks. Our job is to keep white people calm because there's nothing more dangerous and the person in the movie says this on the advertisement. There's nothing more dangerous than an uncalm white person. So the American Society of Magical Negroes job is to keep white people calm and keep them uh, at ease, for lack of a better way of saying. And another racist thing is that the main character falls in love with hey Shima welcome I'm doing good I'm doing good I was I'm a little late waking up but I'm doing good I hope you're doing good as well but um, the main character of the of the movie is falling in love with a white girl great what does the American Society of Magical Negroes tell him? Oh no, that's not a good idea. Don't fall in love with her because then black the black people will lose their powers to keep white people calm. Does that doesn't that sound like racism to you? Like that's that sort of stuff should not be in movies. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Should make no. I'm not sorry. American Society of Magical Negroes is racist, and anybody that says that there's no such thing as reverse racism, yes, there is. Yes, there is. We justify our racism against white people, and that's what makes it not reverse racism. What are you doing, my friend? Uh, nothing much. Just I'm, I'm talking about some K-pop stuff and um, things, you know, just K-pop stuff and how politics and K-pop should mix, things like that. Um, but other than that, I'm doing great. Um, Chinese Nuna says, wait a minute, let me go down again, let me go down again, blah, 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 there we go. Um, have you watched the Shiny World movie documentary yet? I know, uh, America has it on Prime. Uh, I have not watched it yet. Prime, okay, so, thank you for reminding me, because I actually forgot. Thank you for reminding me, because um, I actually did forget. It would be DVD fifth of May. Okay, I'll I'll be keeping my eye on the DVD. Um, yeah, I haven't I have I haven't uh, been keeping my mind on what I'm supposed to be looking for because of doctor's appointments and things like that. So I'm and people, I don't know what it is about these couple of weeks, but people have been requesting things like crazy. People have been requesting things like crazy. Oh, although some of them I, I feel like are not really re requests because they feel, I feel like they're like, oh, react to this, react to that, react to like, I'm starting to feel like my friend Dohi. I'm starting to feel like my friend Dohi. I'm not a, I'm not a reaction mushy. Okay, I am I am not a reaction machine. You put coin in me and tell me react this, react that, blah, blah, blah. That's rude. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I don't mind reacting um, to stuff. I just... If you could just, like, put it in question form, could you react to? I'd appreciate that. 
not not y'all. I'm just the ones that uh, that that are supposedly asking me to react to stuff. I don't mind reacting to it. It's just that I kind of wish that there was, it was in a question form and rather n instead of like a statement form, like telling me react, telling me react, telling me react. And I know y'all don't mean no harm by it, but I would I would appreciate it. It makes me feel like more of a human and less less like a machine. If you understand what I'm saying, I don't want to feel like a machine. I, I want to feel like a human. So ask me, can you react to, would you react to, would you be, would you be interested in this, this, that, and the other, and please, and thank you, and all that. I, I would appreciate that a lot. Doe, he is a little, a little bit more, how do I say this? Dohi, Dohi is way more stern than I am. But he was on YouTube for longer than me, so he probably had had enough. Um, but I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to do my best to not fuss at people. I don't like fussing at people. I really don't. By the way, I noticed that on a lot of my K2 videos, it sounds like I'm fussing at people. Uh, my sister, we had a conversation and she told me that contrary to what I believe my voice sounds like, it actually, my voice is very, uh, well, she said it projects. So I'm trying to calm my voice down a little bit because my voice does sound like, when it projects, it does sound like I'm talking at people instead of talking to people. I don't mean to do that, guys. I really don't. On my K2 videos, when I'm saying that we need to stop this, we need to stop that, it's my, it's my overly passionate uh, voice coming out, but... It, it could be perceived as you're just being mean and loud and this and that and the other. And I don't want people to think that. So I'm going to do my best to calm my voice down in my videos. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. But when I'm passionate about something, y'all know me, my voice, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, that's, that, that's one thing that I want to talk about. Also, uh, I did kind of, you're just being yourself, which is great. Yeah, I am. Of course, being myself isn't always great for everyone. People tend to like, be like, you know, what's my, where's my life? She is at work. Um, she's at work. I don't know when she gets off, but she's at work right now. I want to do a live stream with Mama Moonlight so bad, guys. We just have to find the right time. We just have to find the right time. And my mom has to not be tired. Uh, Cause I don't want her to, I don't want her to sacrifice her, you know, rest time for me. Cause I just feel like that would be really, that would be wrong of me to take that away from her just for the sake of a live stream. So if she's tired on a Saturday, I'm not gonna bother her, but I would love to have her on a live stream. And she said that she'd be more than happy to do it, to interact with you guys uh, live. So that would be nice. Uh, but we just have to figure out what's a good day, if she's up for it, if she's not up for it, stuff like that. But um, definitely something I plan on doing in the future. But yeah, she's all right. She's doing good. She's at work, and uh, I don't know when she went to work, and I don't know when she gets off, but I also wanted to talk about, and I wanted to ask you guys, where do you guys think, or what do you guys think Taman's plan is as far as who he's, like, what company he's choosing? Well, I mean, we kind of... It's not that that's a, an issue, but people have been saying, and I, I don't believe this, by the way, people have been saying that Big Planet Maid tried to rope Taman in. I don't believe that. People have been saying that Baekhyun convinced Taman to, to leave SM. I don't believe that either. That doesn't sound right. Um, or that CBX was trying to tell Taman to leave SM. And I'm, I, don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see that. Um, so I don't know why people are getting hung up on Taemin going to Big Planet Made as if it's confirmed 
Uh, it's not confirmed. I think the bigger question is, where's Onu going? He's got a new show uh, starting on the 4th of April called Crazy Super Koreans. Huh. I might have actually saw the, uh, saw a video talking about it. I just didn't, saw it on YouTube but didn't click it. Because I, I don't know, I didn't click it. With regards to Tay Min, uh, with the cards attainment, I think he knows he needs a change. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's been speculation that Taman left. Speculation. Allegedly. That Taman left because of... I think it was... What was this? What was that single? Um, criminal. The criminal thing. Uh, the promotion for criminal was a little bit behind because literally during that time he was promoting with Super M and Super M was getting more promotion as a collective than Taman was on his solo project of Criminal and I don't think that's true unless it was a occurrence that took place many many times before Criminal Saying that one occurrence is why he left doesn't make sense to me. Um, but Taman did say something about that. That he was very disappointed and it was a very depressing thing to have a criminal revealed on, I think it was some kind of variety show he was on, and something about criminal was revealed on there. And he was like, that's not the way that I, would, I wanted criminal to be revealed. And so, you know, it was kind of disappointing to him for that to happen. And during that time, he was also promoting with Super M. So Super M got more spotlight than Tame and Solo stuff. But I don't think that that one incident is why he left. And people are saying that that's, that's a speculation as to why he left. I think it would have had to have been multiple things. I'm actually surprised Key stayed because of how how hard he fought to just get his own creative, you know, his own creative rights, if you will, to his own projects and his own solo stuff. Like him crying because they would not let him do what he wanted for one of his projects. I mean, they're letting him do it now because they're like, okay, Maybe we should just like back off, back off of Key. But uh, then again, the deal that they gave Key was probably good, and that's why Key and Minho are, you know, still doing stuff. Um, as for as for Onu, yeah, as for Onu, um, I think he had. Sorry. The, the the ring light is distracting me from the white letters, so y'all just bear with me. I apologize. <laughs> I, I promise you I can read. Uh, as far as as far as Onu, uh, I think he's had enough of SM since it caused him to have such health issues. Um, and now he's healthy again. He doesn't want to lose. Yes, I believe that to be true. I think Onu would have been fine if it wasn't for the health problem thing that happened. Onu's never been worked like that before. I mean, he's never been worked like that before. I think he and Minho will leave once uh, the contract ends. I also believe that as well. I also believe that as well. I don't think that they will stay past the contract. What do they, ha what do they have to gain from it, you know? They have nothing to gain from that, so um, I predict that they will be leaving too when the contract ends. Same with EXO. I think all of EXO is going to leave when the contract, when their contract ends, they're leaving. Uh, the ones that haven't already left SM or parted ways with SM to pursue their solo stuff, 
they're going to be leaving Suho, uh, Sehun, Kai. I think that's everybody. It's just three. No, 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 no. Chenyo, Chenyo, Sehun, Suho, Kai. I think that's everybody. Everybody else, Dio, Baekhyun, Shumin, Chen, they're like they're they're on their way out. Baekhyun's already out. He's just promoting with EXO because they still, you know, that's the only thing that he's doing. But as far as solo stuff, Baekhyun is so low, so low. Dio, he's he's done, uh, but he's still with EXO, which is great. So it's the same thing that's going on with Shiny is going on with Taemin and Onu situation. But I think that's why people are trying to link CBX and, and Shiny in that way. But I don't think that's the case. I don't think that they're... I don't think that CBX came to Shumin... I mean, came to uh, Taemin and Onu. I don't think that that happened. I don't think that happened. I don't think they would do that. That just doesn't sound like something they would do. I think their interests are about their own, you know. I see your question popped up here. I'm waiting for it to pop up on my screen. I'm gonna read it here. I'm trying my best to read it here. Um, through Becchio, they will be a part of uh, the company that Beckyan made after he left. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Chinese Nuna, but the company that he's making, I think Casper's helping him, right? Um, the choreographer. Casper's helping Beckyan. And then Dio's, I think Dio and his manager is doing something like that? Doing something as well? I don't know if Dio is doing something on his own or if he's going to join Becky on as well. I have no idea. I think that Dio's doing his own thing. Not sure, though. XO or Shiny's Juniors, they wouldn't approach. That's And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Exactly, Shiny's Nuna. Thank you. That's exactly right. Yes, Casper is, at, is aiding. Yep. So that's a, actually a really cool combination because Casper is a very well-renowned choreographer in Korea and for SM mainly so I think that's great um, yeah I don't think that that EXO would approach Shiny as Shiny as their seniors so right exactly that's I also believe that and it's actually one of, that's one of the main reasons why I don't believe that CBX would try to convince Taemin and Onu, or Taemin specifically, of, for, le you know, leaving SM. I don't think that's, that doesn't sound right. And for that, one of, that's one of the reasons why it doesn't sound right, because Shiny is, you know, they came out in 2008. They are, they are EXO seniors. They would never approach their senior to do that. Plus, it's a, it's a bad look on both of them, CBX and Taemin, to do that. Why would they put Taemin through that? No. They wouldn't do that. Absolutely not. It's a bad look. And to, and to assume that they would do that, like you're, you're basically trying to say that CBX are problematic. Which would lead me to believe that the people that are speculating that CBX or that Baekhyun specifically would come to Taemin and, and tell him that he needs to leave, these are the people that side with SM. I would assume that the only people that would come up with that kind of thing are people that side with SM. Just to make Baekhyun look bad. Or if they don't side with SM, then they believe that Be they don't like it, they don't like Baekhyun. I'll put it that way. Especially because of the whole Baekhyun and Taehyun uh, dating thing that, that, that happened. 
which I totally forgot about. And I find nothing wrong with Baekhyun and Taehyun dating, regardless of the age thing. They're both grown adults, you know. But thus is the nature of being an idol. You have to apologize. You have to apologize for dating someone that you like. And then they had to break up, which was very stupid that they had to break up. But it is what it is. I hate that. I hate that for idols. People, and this is why I say, why do y'all think that idols are privileged? When y'all make sure that they're not privileged. <laughs> this whole mentality of, and actually one of the points that I was going to make on the video that I deleted, that I was working on, uh, which I, oh yeah, Shiny's Nuna, that's another thing that you miss. Uh, I only made, I think, two reaction videos this week, unfortunately, because I think it was two. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was two. Because... Because my cap cut was acting stupid. My cap cut was acting stupid. And I I think I had like three projects. I had to delete one of them. And what I'm about to say from the other project is... Uh, well, what I'm about to say is from the, uh, the project that I had to delete. Put it that way. There's not that much uh, of an age difference between Tay and Beckham. I agree. But... Some of the radical, unhinged K netizens believe that it is. Or they're just saying that to throw a wrench in the whole thing. Because they probably don't even believe what they're saying. They're just saying it because they want there to be a reason to keep Baekhyun as their, their boy crush, right? There, but that's my that's my man, that's my Baekhyun, or even the Taehyun fans, that's my girl, that's my that's my woman. You know, stay away from my woman. That parasocial relationships again. <sighs> pay attention to me, pay attention to me. I, I'm I we make you know we make fan chants for you guys. We buy your albums we buy your merch we do all this we support you the love of the fans isn't enough for you the love of the fans what about us what about us me 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 you're mine you're belong you belong to me you know you're you're our love interest not their love interest you're not allowed to date these people no no don't date them no we'll boycott you don't do it don't do it we'll penalize you we'll penalize you for dating someone other than us even though we know that like realistically you can't date all of us at one time you know <laughs> nuna you know <laughs> nuna don't do this nuna appa you know just that kind of dumb crap that these fans do and it's just really stupid to me it is it's stupid It's it's dumb. It's it's hilarious and it's stupid. And these are the same people that, you know, send protest trucks to the companies and tell them that if you don't uh, do this, then we're gonna do this. If you don't do if you don't do this, we're gonna do this and that and the other. We're gonna stop supporting this. We're gonna the only the only actually actually guys. Now I'm starting to remember what the. Uh, what the video was about and I'm kind of mad that I had to delete it because I actually put a lot of work into it and I made a script I made a script for it the video that I deleted which I'm kind of now grieving now that I remember what it was I'm grieving the loss of the video it was about rise <laughs> it was about rise it was about rise's Anton and uh I think uh What's the other what's the other one? Insuk? I think it's Rise and Insuk. That whole that whole situation? That's what it was about. And how people wanted to, them to apologize 
for dating when they weren't dating anyone. And now the company wants to come out and take legal action for allegations of dating when they didn't even take action for Sung Han. And that was the hypocrisy that I was calling out in that video. Mainly, that SM that SM did not defend Sung Han. Keisha always did that for Minho um, for Minho recently. Protest truck just because he is doing a Japanese huh? Because he's doing a Japanese sports show? Why? Well, I mean, why Why would they send protests with trucks because he's doing a Japanese sports show? Hasn't Shiny been on Japanese... Say, oh! Thank you, Mama Moonlight. Mama Moonlight just blessed her son with $1 super chat or a super sticker. Thank you, Mama. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you, Mama. <clears throat> but, um... <clears throat> hey, Mama. Yeah, God knows it was... Um, God knows it was supposed to be dangerous or something. Dangerous? Wait, but he's he's doing a sports show. Like what's he going to do? What's what what is the what are the details? Okay, hold 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 it because listen, I'm supposed to be doing a video on the whole Tame In and, and Onu leaving thing. But this Minho thing, I didn't know about. So I might actually be doing a video on that too. But give me some time because the woke video, I I need to focus on the woke video, but I just need to make sure that I keep a mental note of this stuff. I just think it's stupid. What is he what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? What's Minho gonna do to hurt himself? He's doing a Japanese sports show. They didn't say exactly what that would be entail like what that entails. Is he just like talking is he like commentating with a group of people or is he participating in the sport i don't think he's doing a like wh what kind of sports show exactly are they like what is going on in this sports show i guess focus on the things you need to um prioritize yes yes the woke video is very important so i, I really want to get that out and i'm praying as i'm going through this i'm praying that what I say is understood and resonates with everyone. I already know it's a hopeless, unrealistic expectation, but I'm still praying that the majority of people that see it will at least understand what the video is about and where I'm coming from with that. Because I do believe that woke stuff politics and all this are seeping into k-pop and it's messing everything up and i hate that i want to enjoy k-pop without all this stuff about this person's fat phobic because they made a comment about losing weight in a way that was not harmful but just telling the truth and one of the things that i hate is that telling the truth is can mama moonlight what are you doing today thank you <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I need to have, like, my cap cut thing open so I can actually, like... <laughs> so I can actually do, like, cheers or whatever. Uh, hold on, Mom. Hold on. Because I, I gotta whip out some cheering for you, for what you just did. That was, lot, that was very nice of you. Uh... Nope, sorry. Yeah, cheering. Cheering. I don't know. Hopefully you can hear this. Let's see.
Okay, well, it's not doing anything. Come on, do something. Cheer. Okay, well, it's not working. Um. Oh, never mind. That's, God, that's not what I wanted. I said cheering. There we go. Cheering sounds. Cheering sounds. Here we go. Nope, that's not it either. No, come on. Cheering, y'all. Cheering. I'm spelling cheering. Cheering and applause. Thank you. God, have mercy. They can't. Uh, all right, here you go. Thank you, Mom. Here we go. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Okay, well, some of that cheering sounded a little weird because they were laughing. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That sounded off. Sound like um, like passive aggressive cheering. Didn't mean for that to, to be passive aggressive, but passive aggressive cheering. Anyway, uh, I don't know if that's exactly the right way to describe it, but thank you, mom. I know what you're doing. She's trying to get me past the one hundred dollar threshold so I could actually start making money on YouTube. That's what she's trying to do. <laughs> thank you, mom. I appreciate that. Uh, Shiny Nina says. Uh, hell, he he has his he has his racing car driving license, uh, which is more dangerous. Yes, yes, I agree. That's more dangerous than a stupid sports show. I agree. Minho, Minho, that that's him getting a race car license sounds so Minho. That is so Minho of him to do. He is that kind of person. Definitely. Definitely. He's that kind of person. Um, I'm trying to think. I was going to say something. Anyway, I think what I was going to say was, is that I don't like that. I think I was going to say I don't like that K-pop and politics are blending and that's uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the woke thing, because it's kind of messing up our experience of K-pop. Um, some of the points that I make in the video might sound a little bit far-fetched to some people, uh, but it's, it's just what I've been noticing, and some of it hasn't happened to that effect. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't like how people telling the truth about something is seen as hate speech. There was a, a K-pop idol who was on a variety show or whatever talking about uh, losing weight. And the way in which he said it, I didn't find anything wrong with it, but a lot of people apparently did. But it was for the reason that, get this, that he just brought up losing weight. Now, some people, some people said that he, the way in which he worded it was a bit distasteful and he could have had, you know, given it time to cook before he presented it that way. And I guess there could have, there's an argument that could be made for that. I wish I had what he said in front of me so you guys could see what I'm talking about, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a, a rough example i'll probably make a video talking about it and i'll put it i'll put it as an example and i'll i'll find it for you guys um which is something that also that i need to put in the back of my mind but he says something about losing weight and he was trying to like kind of say incur like say it in an encouraging way but i think a lot of people may have taken it the wrong way which you know there's it's one thing for shindong of super junior to say very, very disgusting and, like, rude and, well, <laughs> it's, we, it's, it's, it's one thing for him to say fat-shaming things about women, right? objectifying women, when he himself is pretty big, him, you know, his own self, but saying that, you know, it's one thing, like, men... Me, however he said it, 
it was very disrespectful because he was like, well, men can be, if I'm not mistaken, just kind of rough summary. Men can actually uh, look the way that they look or something like that, but women, like, they, they need to look a certain way. Otherwise, it's, you know, something weird like that. But, I'm, of course, I'm not saying it nearly as bad as how he said it. He What he said was stupid. Shouldn't have said it. But he said it. There's one thing for you to be like that. It's another thing for you to just, like, give out, like, information about losing weight. And be vilified for just telling the truth about losing weight. I think you can, you should have a right to say stuff about losing weight without being condemned for it. I know I'm using the word condemned loosely, but it's kind of how it is. I don't think that that's right. So what he said was not a problem. Maybe how he said it should have been doctored a little bit, fixed by him, of course. But what he said was not really a problem. And I just don't think that him saying anything about, I'm not talking about Shindong, I'm talking about somebody else. I don't think that the person who said what they said about losing weight should got got what they got. The heat. All that heat, not necessary. But people telling the truth about stuff should not be seen as hate speech. Okay. Um in K-pop it's 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 pretty bad. But yeah, going back to uh Shiny. I don't think that it's a, it's a bad thing for him to be doing a sports thing in Japan. A sports show or whatever. Minho should not be sending protest. See, this is the thing about fans. Fans send protest trucks sometimes for the stupidest things. Okay? I get I get the Israel and Palestine thing. That's that's serious. That's a good cause to send a protest truck. But sending a protest truck because Minho's going on a Japanese sports show because of maybe a perceived hurt that could be inflicted on him as a result or, you know, because you're more concerned for Minho's health than Minho himself. Minho hasn't, uh, you know, objected to going on this show. So why are fans objecting for him? We do not have autonomy over these people. Parasocial relationships, this is how it is. We believe that because we support these idols, we have some kind of bodily autonomy over them. You are, al you are allowed to go see family, Anton, but you're not allowed to hang out with a girl because we are going to take it as you're dating. That's the fan's fault, not Anton's. Which... Actually, another video that I'm about that I'm going to make is me actually apologizing for being wrong about Bong Chan. Because it would be wrong of me to say that what Anton is doing, apologizing, it'd be wrong of me to say that he he should not be apologizing for fans miss or 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 K-pop netizens misinterpreting what he said. He should be apologizing for that, but Bong Chan should be apologizing for, for that. I think that's that's not true. That's not that's not cool, and that's kind of what I was saying in that video about like it's Bong Chan's fault and uh, the the fans' fault. The only that yes. So I'm I'm actually recanting the Bong Chan Chan's room videos, both of them that I made because looking at this incident it's literally lo looking at the Bong Chan thing and I can't say that a thing is right for Anton to do but wrong for Bong Chan or something's right for Bong Chan and wrong for Anton it's the same situation people thought he was dating misinterpreted what he was putting out there or what and what he was saying um, trying to dig and find information to put two and two together, linking the pendants that Anton was wearing 
and the girl was wearing that he was, you know, holding hands with and trying to link them. When the truth comes out that everyone on the swim team, a part of Anton's swim team and friend group, has uh, pendants. I said bracelet, didn't I? I've, did I say pendant or bracelet? Bracelet. Pendant. Whatever. Everyone on the swim team has those pendants. Not just her. And then the girl's sister, older sister, comes out and says that they were never dating. Insuk, same thing. None of them should be apologizing for the fans' bad decisions regarding the situation, mishandling the situation. Bong Chan should also not have to apologize for the fans trying to dig information to find uh, what idol group is he talking about that's not bowing, right? And all this other stuff. Yes, I did say that Bong Chan should have seen this coming because, or he should not seen this coming, but should have like been a little more careful in the future events because of people taking his words out of context. But at the same time, it, like I said, it's no different than Anton posting a picture. You assume the best of people. You don't assume that people are going to take a picture and be like, okay, you're dating. Let's find out who she is. Right? You're, you're not assuming that people would do that. Bong Chan shouldn't have to constantly have his guard up every time. And me faulting Bong Chan for having his guard up when he's just trying to create a space for uh, stays to just have a, a precious moment with him. Uh, I feel like I was wrong for that. Because now I'm looking at Anton's and Insuk's situation and Bong Chan's situation in a different light and it should not, I should never think that one thing is right for one group and wrong for another group. So yeah, I'm taking that back because I'm starting to see the light. I'm starting to see the light. Um, Me personally though, I would have been more careful if it was me. After the few times that fans took my words and tried to like find and do stuff, you're right. Um, the Wujin thing being one of them. Uh, I don't know if he was talking about Wujin, to be honest, when he said what he said about when you make a promise, you know, when you make a promise to your members or whatever. I don't know if he's talking about Wujin. I would say he's not because he said he's not. I'm going to take his word for it. But people, if he wasn't talking about, if he wasn't talking about Ujin, then people misinterpreted his words there and then made a whole nut show out of it, right? And then he had to come and then say, listen, I'm not talking about him. And people still didn't care because they had it made up in their minds that Bong Chan's just trying to protect Ujin and he's trying to take back his words. no. You said what you said, and it's about Wujin, even though he didn't say Wujin's name. So, yeah, after the few times of this happening, I would have not been willing to expose too much more stuff. But at the same time, I remember after uploading my Bong Chan video, I found that Everglow Up had made a video about how idols shouldn't have um, free speech. Or free speech shouldn't be in K-pop. I think I understand what she was saying, but at the same time, I kind of disagree if if she's saying that... It, it's been a minute since I watched the video, but if she's saying that idols shouldn't have free speech because everything they say is going to be taken out of context... I mean, I get it, but at the same time, it's like... That should not deter idols from having free speech just because people are going to misinterpret them that stuff. People are people are subject to their own mental devices. Right? They have their own agendas, some of them have their own uh, intentions for muddying the waters of what idols talk about. So it's like you can't really do anything about those kinds of people. So for that to be a reason to not have the ability to, to speak freely as an idol, I feel like that's wrong. I feel like that's wrong. Um, so it's kind of weird to say that idols shouldn't have free speech to me. 
Just just personally, I just don't see that. I don't shouldn't have free speech because people are going to take their words out of context. Well, people are going to take my words out of context, and I'm not an idol. People take my words out of context all the time. The colorism video, people took my words out of context. <laughs> Any, It doesn't matter if you're an idol or not. This is my pushback. It doesn't matter if you're an idol or not. If you are in the public eye, if you're creating videos, if you're talking about stuff, if you have an opposite opinion of what the majority of people have, people are going to misinterpret what you say no matter what you say. That's the nature of humanity. And so idols should not be exempt or, or have their right to speak freely taken away from them just because people, just because people, right? So I think, I think Everglobe's wrong on that. If that's, if that's what she was saying in the video, and I can't remember again, but I think she's wrong on that. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, and again, one of the reasons why I really don't follow Everglobe anymore is because the very thing that she says she uh, does not like people doing and the very thing that she claims makes you lose the argument, she does the very thing. She does it. What, what is it? What is that thing I'm talking about? Insulting the person and not combating or, or uh, coming against the argument the person makes. She said... In, an, in a debate, you are supposed to attack the argument, address the argument, not attack the person giving the argument. Because when you do that, you lose the argument because now you're focusing on the person. You're making personal attacks because you have nothing else to talk about. You can't defend your argument, so you make personal attacks on the person, insulting their character, insulting their mindset. Yet she goes on her videos and calls people um, childish, you know, uh, silly. The f are you? The f? What the f were y'all thinking? Which, what the f are y'all thinking? I, I I get that. I get that. But again, that topic of discussion was very serious. So to say that. <sighs> You know, just, and one of the reasons why I loved her is because of her don't give a crap about what anybody thinks. I'm going to say what I want. I like that because it shows like backbone and there's a lot of that lacking in K-tubing and like just giving your opinions in general because we're scared of being canceled or we're scared of people, you know, attacking us and, and sending threats and things like that for what we what we believe. So I get that. And it's like saying, you're not going to silence me. I liked that, that aspect of her channel. But it can become a detriment if you're talking about something that is way more serious than just dating stuff or... Um, someone attacking their members because they have a mental uh, illness that they're dealing with. Uh, there's so many things like that are like if you talk about a serious topic of discussion like Israel and Palestine and you use that same verbosity, you use that same vigor, that same zeal. I don't give a crap about what you think. I'm going to say what I want. That could actually damage your entire argument because you're not coming at it from a place of let me break down why I believe this in a rational manner calm, cool, collected this was full on I'm going to say my opinion don't give a crap about what you say now I don't know if she's a Zionist or not have no idea don't really care if she is or isn't I don't care that she's a Zionist that's not my problem my problem is what you said was insensitive and wrong and hypocritical. So, um, especially when you talk about how the, uh, when you talk about how the, the boycotts didn't do anything. Yes, they did. 
actually. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what company it was. I think it was Starbucks. Lost. I think it was a was it eleven? I think eleven billion dollars or something like that. I could be wrong, and I had it pulled up um, when I was researching it, but it was something like eleven or something like that. Eleven billion dollars or something. Um, they lost a lot of money. Now, is it enough to make the company go bankrupt? No. No. To shut it down? No. But they did lose a significant amount of money. So there was an effect. And then to say that, well, these companies, like, is it really a, a is it really a, a protest if, I'm going to, I'm probably going to butcher this a little bit. She said, is it really, is it really a protest when nobody knows about it, nobody cares, and no one's affected? Then she proceeds to say that companies aren't affected, and then says that, and the only the only thing that is affected in the company is the the fam lower class families you know low income families that are working like the the lower jobs in the company that get fired or laid off. So how are you going to say that no one's affected, and then you proceed to say who that who's affected in the company? Then the last statement that she made, which I had the most problem with, was that if you research, if you do proper research, then you'll come to three conclusions. Number one, both are fighting for their right to exist. Number two, both are trying to er eradicate each other from the face of the earth. And number three, no amount of uh, getting your coffee or whatever is going to uh, change that or whatever. And I just thought that was like, oh my God, this is not good. It's not good. Um, but yeah, anyway, I guess my whole point is, uh, I think she has a right, she has a right to have her opinion. But having your opinion does come with consequences, especially when you are that insensitive, firstly, and secondly, when you're saying, when you're giving misinformation about stuff. And then contradicting yourself in your own explanation. Um, this is something that Everglobe's never gonna have, never gonna be able to live down. And I I hate that that happened for her because I really do respect her for what she has done for K tubing. Really, she has addressed a lot of things that I agree with. The Wujin situation. Um, I think it was AOA. The, the girl that had the, uh, the mental illness and how she was attacking her members and blaming uh, the leader, leader. I think it was she's the leader, Jimin. Jimin. Um, and how AOA basically ended up failing because of what happened, right? Um, but anyway, getting off of Everglow Up, because there's something else I did want to talk to you guys about. Um, of course, you guys can give your comments or whatever on what you think about what I'm saying. But I'm going to move on because there is something that came out about Omega X. And my back is kind of hurting. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> there's something There's something that came out about Omega X. That there was camera footage of one of the members trying to force themselves on, um, I think, the CEO's wife. Who was the like manager or whatever of the... I can't remember what she was, but she she was either the manager or she was the CEO or something. But the guy who is in charge of the company came out and and said that one of the one of the members was trying to force themselves on his wife. The one the wife that was like going nuts and acting crazy and causing them pain and all this stuff. I I have a problem with this. Okay, I have a problem with this. Because we saw the press conference. Right? We saw the press conference of Omega X. We saw how they looked. We saw their faces. We saw their, their tears. We saw and we heard their statements. 
of what was done to them. This, if it's true that this happened, that could undo everything that Omega X was championing when they were breaking free from an abusive company. So I have concerns about that. And I'm not going to talk about it on a video or whatever until I have full full context, full information and all that stuff. I'm not I'm not just going to talk about it just because I'm not going to mm -mm. I need information. I need to see what's true and what's not because I t I still believe that Omega X suffered under that company. So to sit there and tell me that what I saw in the press conference was an act or for me to believe that what they're like, they're not telling the whole truth or I don't know because a part of me is wanting to believe that the, the CEO of the company is retaliating to try to clear his name and his company's reputation. And so that's why they're doing this. Um, I don't know what the footage is showing entirely. Uh, I think there, there's probably like some motion to the footage. It's a CCTV footage. So there's motion going on, but I haven't seen it. So I want to I wanna get all of the details before I draw a conclusion. And even after that, I'm probably not going to draw a conclusion. Until it is uh, done. Until everything's done. I still, I can't, I can't believe that what he's saying is true right now, though. I just can't. Not after everything that Omega X has not only talked about, but has has evidence, and there are people around them that took camera footage of what was being done. So there's just something about this that seems very weird on the company side. And I'm just hoping to God that what Omega X said is completely true and that there's nothing hidden right that we don't know about which is the which is what the company is trying to show i have a bad feeling bad feeling so i'm hoping that omega x is is completely in the right and that not one of the mem not one of the members was doing what he accused uh, one of the members of doing. Because if one member is accused of this, this could throw a huge wrench in holding the whole thing of holding companies accountable for pimping out their idols, prostituting their idols, right? For, for, for deals and things like that and, and better promotions and all this stuff. This could throw a wrench in all that. So I'm praying that it's not true. Praying. Don't have all the information on that, but we'll 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 keep looking at it and we'll I say we a lot. I'm a one man show. I make the videos, I edit them, I upload them, I make the I do all the stuff. I we me I will uh, look at now I will say this though there are some uh some of you guys like Chinese Nuna uh Lauren yeah I'm gonna say you guys who constantly uh show me things from time to time uh on Instagram or whatever send me DMs about like certain things information that I didn't know about or whatever or that, like, if I have some of the information and then you guys have the rest of the information because y'all be doing some digging and investigative journalism stuff, <laughs> I will say that I'm not entirely alone in that sense because I have people like Shinies Nuna and Lauren who be finding this stuff. And so I do appreciate y'all. Um... Especially when it's SM related. Y'all be finding SM stuff like... Right? Uh, but yeah. So I, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. But 
I feel I am alone in, in everything else, but I'm not alone in that aspect. So I do appreciate you guys a lot. I try my best with you. Hey, you do listen. You do an amazing job because there's there's stuff that I'll be knowing about as far as schedule and things like that, um, upcoming events and you know things like that. Sometimes you'll show me like an article or a piece of information about uh, something that's major. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I did not see that coming. So yeah, uh, you you be doing it, and I appreciate it. You and Lauren both, y'all be doing it. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate all of y'all. Without you guys, like I said, Moonlight Antonio, I just be talking to myself on every live stream and on every video. You know, I try to make the best content that I can. Uh, things that would be interesting. Things that would be thought-provoking, compelling, inspiring, maybe even life-changing. Maybe you would have a change of heart about some of the things that you might have thought about in the past or had an opinion on. Maybe I could convince you to have the opposite thought for a change. And if that's if I did that, that's great. That's great. But not every, not every time it's going to be that way, right? But you guys always, you know, support me and let me know that you like the content or that you're interested in it. And honestly, that's what makes, that's what motivates me to keep doing this stuff. Because uh, I could have done a YouTube channel on literally anything. I'm a Star Wars fan. Love Star Wars. Not Disney Star Wars, but George Lucas Star Wars. I love that stuff. So I could have done a whole thing on that. I love Lord of the Rings and Tolkien stuff. I love it. I could have done a whole channel on that. Uh, art, I still might do a channel on art. But I chose K-pop because K-pop is something that I have loved before Lord of the Rings. And before I loved Star Wars as much as I did, I fell in love with K-pop and J-pop. Now, J-pop was my first love. First, first, first. J-pop was the beginning of everything. So I love J-pop and I love Japanese media. I love Japanese games. I love Japanese manga. I love Japanese anime. I love all, all that stuff. All that stuff helped me and shaped me into the person that I am that loves K-pop. So... All that stuff. Love it. But yeah, I said all that long-winded stuff to say uh, thank you. Uh, Chinese Nuna, speaking of Taemin, and is attending a concert festival on the 6th, no, on the 6th slash 7th, right, of April, okay. Ah, yes, that's nice. That sounds good. Speaking of which, that's another thing. Apparently, uh, a lot of people were speculating that Tabian was leaving SM because he didn't get a lot of worldwide concerts. Um, a lot of other people got worldwide concerts and tours and things like that, and Tabian did not. And I kind of agree with that because I haven't heard of of like a tour. But then again, I don't think that even Onu got uh, like a tour. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. He, he started a little later on in solo stuff than Taman. Taman was the first. But like Taman didn't get any like worldwide tours or anything like that. Onu didn't get any worldwide tours. They went to two places, Korea, Japan, because that's where they're most famous in. But I think that it is a marketing missed opportunity to not send them to other places. And don't get me wrong, Shiny has been to America, right? NCT has been to America. Some other K-pop groups have been to America. And other parts of the world. Actually, there are K-pop groups like ATs and all these other places that go to way more countries than Shiny 
than, than I think even Shiny has. I, I don't know exactly how many countries Shiny's been to. Um, but I feel like all these other newer K-pop groups are getting promoted all around the world. Tours all around the world. And Shiny has not had that. Um, not in that scope. Not in that scope. So, yeah, I can kind of understand that. Shiny's Nuna, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you are like the shiny connoisseur encyclopedia, uh, <laughs> the SM encyclopedia. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, Chinese Nuna says, there we go. I was waiting for it to pop up. There it is. Uh, Taman also didn't get, uh, get, didn't get live performance, performance shows, uh, which disappointed. Yes. Yes. I remember that. Somebody said something about that. Shiny is also the only K-pop group to do uh, Abby Road. What? Really? They're the only K-pop group to do Abby Road? Only K-pop group? Only world tour they had is uh, this Asia tour. The Asia tour. Okay. But see, that's the thing. They only they only do they only do Asia tours. And then, like, when uh, all five members were, were together, they did, like, uh, an America tour, I think, maybe once or twice. And I can't quite remember. I'm probably not accurate on how many times they've done this. I'm pretty sure I'm not. But they've done a few uh, America tours. Not many. But they, they predominantly do Asia tours. But there are so many other countries that love K-pop, that want the groups to come there, and SM's not capitalizing off of that. And I think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake. But I understand why they're doing Asia tours. Because <clears throat> Asia is, it's Asia. You know. Yes, not long after their debut, when they came to the UK, um... They got invited to Abbey Road and did the crosswalk. Of course, the famous crosswalk that everybody does, the Abbey Road crosswalk. <clears throat> the iconic. That's, that's how you know you've made it when you do the Abbey Road crosswalk. That's how you know you made it. I just wish they'd do more worldwide tours. That's what I want. I want them to do more worldwide tours. I want K-pop idols to do more worldwide tours. But the only ones that I'm seeing doing that is ATs and... Um, there's a few others. I don't know why ATs is the only one that's coming to my mind right now. But there's other ones that do it. Don't get me wrong, it's not just ATs. But I just wish that more K-pop groups would be promoted worldwide. I think that's why Bong PD said what he said about taking the K out of K-pop. Although I I don't think much would change if you took the K out of K-pop. <laughs> I don't really agree with the idea or concept behind taking the K out of K-pop. Because there is there is a sense of individuality with K-pop that is not with any other form of pop, right? You've got Latin pop. You've got, you know, all these other different kind of pops going on. K-pop should be K-pop. It should stay that way. I think it should stay that way. Just stay K-pop. 
NCT did theirs recently and were in the UK too. Also Paris. Yeah, see, NCT, they, th that's another group that does worldwide tours. I, like I said, the fourth and fifth gen K-pop groups are doing tours around the world, while third and second gen don't. I guess because they've had their time. Had their time. I don't know. But I still think that uh, they should do more tours. SM should allow more of their third gen idols do. I don't even think EXO has done any like. I don't know. EXO might have done more tours worldwide than Shiny. I could be wrong about that though. Could be totally wrong about that. The time when they sang the Sabor a Me. I think that was in uh, Spain, right? Was it Spain? Could be wrong, but I think it was Spain. They have some Spanish fans out there. XOLs, Spanish XOLs. <clears throat> A lot of them actually. And uh, of course they do, because Dio, Dio is like the Dio is the poster child of the Spanish XOL fandom. Um, he is the one. Dio is the one. Of course he is. But yeah. Just taking a break for a minute of talking. I talk so much. Sometimes I talk a lot and I don't take a break to like sit and chill. People get disinterested very quickly when you sit and chill. <laughs> so I try to keep the conversation going, but this is the beginning of, of live streaming for me. I know I've done quite a number of live streams already, but this is the beginning of live streaming. It's going to get way more hectic the more the channel grows. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also scared about it. I'm scared. I'm scared of it because of how many people are going to be in my live streams. And when that day comes, not if, but when, best believe that some of you OG uh, Moonlight fam, fam, mo something. my English is actually messing up now. Here we go again. I'm bringing shame to the English people, to my fellow English speaking people. When that time comes, best believe that I will be appointing uh, mods to help me govern the chats because I'm going to need that. And, uh, I already have a few candidates who have been constantly here. Uh, some of you OG supporters of the Moonlight channel. So, yeah. And yes, Shiny's Nuna, I'm thinking about Tom Tom about you. I think you'd be a great mod. I think you'd be a great mod. Um... And, it, and, you, and one thing I, I don't care about, like, some, some you concentrators, like, they get, like, really, really weird about mods being in the live stream throughout the entire live stream. I'm not that way. If you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm not gonna hold you, right? You're not on my payroll. I shouldn't be, like, telling you, no, you need to stay the whole live stream. No. Uh, so don't worry about that. But I'm definitely going to make you guys a mod uh, eventually when the time comes. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. 
Oh, you're saying you wouldn't make a great mod? No. Or are you saying you wouldn't stay for the entire live stream? I think you'd make a great mod, but I know that you probably wouldn't be able to stay the entire live stream. Uh, especially considering some of my live streams have lasted for literally four hours. But that's like when that's when I have a lot of people like in the chat and we're just going on and on and on and on. And it's just good conversation and good vibes. Then, then the conversation could last for like three or four hours. I don't expect my mods to stay here for three or four hours. But I will uh, definitely be... I wouldn't make a good mod. No! No, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think you'd make a great mod. I used to be a mod for Dohi. I used to be a mod for Dohi. I would think I was a mod for like, maybe, I don't know, was it two years? I think it was like two years. Or a year and a half or something like that. I was a mod for a while. Excuse me. Um, if I could be a mod, I think you guys could. I think, you, I think you'd be great. I think you'd be great. If you like, I don't, I, I, and the thing is, I don't want to take free speech away from people in, in my chat. So even if people like tell me something, like say something stupid, I want to read it just so that I can like see what's going on. I don't mind having a conversation with people that disagree with me. I really don't. I don't. But if, if they like start really, really like, if they start saying stuff against y'all, that's my biggest concern. Like, if people get into an argument with a particular person and y'all tell me to ban someone, I'm going to confront that person and say, hey, you know, what are you, what are you talking about and what's going on? And could you please talk to me? Because I want to talk to you and see what's going on. What's wrong with you and why do you have a problem? Like, what's happening? What's happening? Um, and if people give people too much of a problem on my channel, yes, I will block them and, uh, put them on timeout or whatever. And, you know, you guys can, mods can put them on timeout, uh, or kick them out completely. Um, whatever. Mods will have power to do that, to help me be my eyes while I'm trying to have healthy dialogue with you guys. Um, that's what mods are. They just keep order and they, they are people with good personality. If you have a good personality and good judge of character, I like you. Okay. And especially if you were with me since the beginning, if you were with me and I know Shiny Zuni, you kind of came later on, but you've been here for a long time. You've been here for a long time. And you constantly, um, like, keep me in the loop on things. And you constantly do this and that and the other. Lauren is the same way. I would love to have her as a mod, but she's, not, she's like, barely here. But, um, I would love to have her as a mod. I would love to have... I like, a lot of the demographic of viewership are mainly women on my channel. Because it's K-pop. I guess K-pop's more appealing to women than men. I guess. Um... Which is fine. I don't I don't mind that. Um But yeah, I, I think you'd be fine. I think you'd be a great mod. I really appreciate you, Shiny's Nuna. Like you do you do well. Like helping me out and finding things and things like that. I don't even ask for it, you just like find it. Um I appreciate that. I do, I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys. You guys help me with all of this stuff. Um, even like Lauren gave me ideas for K2 content that I didn't even think about. <laughs> so it's all those hot Asian guys. Oh, right. That's, that's the appeal, right? That's the appeal. That's the appeal. I got you. That's what attracts the girls. Got the hot Asian guys. And that's the appeal. And that's, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
<laughs> I get it. But still, I do appreciate you guys being here. You you girls being here. Moonlight family is predominantly girls. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I do wish there were some guys in here, though. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, there are some guys in here, but I they don't really... Then again, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't know how true that is. I don't, I don't know if there's any guys... I have to look at the demographics again, but I know for a fact that the majority of people that watch my content are women. I know for a fact, especially when they can sing and dance, and if they're like Key and Minho, uh, they can cook, clean, and do laundry. Yeah, okay. That's an attractive guy, right? That's an attractive guy. You can cook and clean, Sing and dance. <laughs> it's one of the biggest appeals of K-pop, really. It's one of the biggest appeals to have very attractive people doing very amazing things. You know, girl groups, same way. They're attractive. They have that glow to them. They have those visuals, and then they have those voices. Those voices, man. Fish! Guys and girls alike. My mom, of course, loves the guy groups. She loves the guy groups. So do I. So do I. I'm a more of, I'm more of a guy group guy, but I love girl groups too. That's why I'm trying to give them more of a spotlight this year. It's just I, I gotta get around to it. There's people that want me to react to like treasure um, treasure guide the the member guide to treasure and and uh, treasure um, like a show like some um, what do you call those variety shows? They want me to read. They want me to react to that stuff. I don't have a problem reacting to variety shows. Just that it's going to be very hard to edit them because I'm going to be pausing and playing and pausing and playing and pausing. I have to edit that in. It's very difficult to, to do those kinds of uh, shows, if I'm being honest. Very difficult. I have to admit, I prefer male idol groups uh, rather than the female, but I like some solo girl. And that that is totally understandable. That is totally understandable. I prefer guy groups because, well, I'm a guy, number one. Number two, I love the charisma. The, the, like, girl groups, they don't do all of that. Like, they don't do all that dance stuff like, like guys do. Guys dance very intensely. Crazily. And I'm thinking of ATs right now. Because ATs, uh, uh, Zekers or Zikers. Some people say Zikers. I say Zekers because it's Zeker, Zikers, 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 whatever. These groups are mad dope. I love them. I love their charisma. I love them going ape, ape, I can't say that, I'm not going to say that word, ape, ape, sh crazy, there we go, filter that baby, filter it, um, they go, they go nuts, live performances, nuts, music videos, nuts, girls, I still love the girls because they give something that the guys don't have, which is like the elegance, the, 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 um, charisma, from like the female uh, aspect of charisma, which is a little more tamed, but I think uh, it kind of serves the girls because I guess the industry doesn't want to see girls 
doing the same thing that guys do. Yet I prefer to see the same thing from girls, but girls are, like girl choreography is girl choreography for, for a reason, female choreography for a reason, because it's tailored to their, um, their, their body types, right? The, how they, their physicality, their body types, um, their stamina, guys have a totally different stamina level than girls. So I understand that dynamic. I understand that dynamic. Um, but I love the charisma of the guy groups. They are just mad crazy. I checked out Tim's latest. I checked out Tim's latest and uh, I have to say I preferred the live performances over the NV. Nightwalker, I need... I actually knew that Tin came out with uh, some solo stuff, and I just haven't, I haven't reacted to it yet. And I, I'm, so, I'm back of my mind. I'm saying I need to do it. I need to do it, and I might react next week. But I'm trying not to overburden myself with too many reactions. There's still like I think three reactions I have not edited or uploaded yet. Then I have to find another shiny. Uh, Saturday video, which is going to be a Japanese uh, video this time. I'm hoping it doesn't get blocked. If it does, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll react to a, a, a shiny Japanese song and then a shiny Korean song just in case. But I don't want to waste my time trying to edit a Japanese song reaction if it, you know, I'm wasting my time. I don't like that. I remember I did that one time. I edited this one. No, actually, I did it. I did it quite a number of times. I edited a video to a Japanese group. I can't think of their names right now. Ballistic, Ballistic Boys, Ballistic Boys, Japanese uh, J-pop, hip-hop group. I, I, I mean, I, it was one of my favorite videos that I ever reacted to or uploaded, but it was blocked. No one could watch it. No one. I put all that effort into editing it for nothing, and it frustrated the, the crap out of me. There was a girl group, a Japanese girl group that I also reacted to. Frustrated me that I could not uh, give that reaction either because someone requested that, and I couldn't give them what they requested because the video was blocked. And no amount of editing could change the block. <laughs> no amount of editing whatsoever. I tried everything. That's why I say Japanese stuff always does this. If you're uh, if you're doing Japanese songs, use the uh, the transparent filter. Yeah, I I do, I do. Um, but sometimes the audio part is also a problem. Some, for some songs, like TXT, TXT's, was it TXT or Rise? No, I think it's Rise. Well, actually, no, Rise's stuff is Korean, but they still wouldn't let me. Rise's, Korean, Rise's stuff was Korean, and they still, I don't know what it is about Rise's stuff, but I, like, those videos get blocked badly. Love 119 was so bad. I tried to remove the audio from the um, the reaction of that. Still, it was bad. It was bad. And it's like, I don't want to take away that experience from you guys. To remove the audio, like putting a filter over top of the thing, which I have done for some of the shiny um, reactions that you you know you've seen them. I've done that for some of them, and it, it was fine. But sometimes that that little filter is not enough, and the audio gets is, is the reason why a lot of them get banned as well or blocked as well. That's the thing that frustrates me is that I cannot, for the life of me. Fix that problem with Rise's 119. 
I wanted so badly for you guys to see the 119 thing. And I did upload the 119 because it wasn't blocked completely, but a certain percentage of my viewership could not see the video. In fact, it was so blocked that when I go to my YouTube channel, that Love 119 reaction doesn't even show up on videos that I've already done. It doesn't show up. So I don't even see it. It's I'm blocked from my own video. <laughs> blocked from seeing my own video. That's how blocked that video is. And it's not even a Japanese song. So it's, it's frustrating to see that. And again, I did take the audio out, but the experience after taking the audio out, to me, sucks. I hate that. I found, uh, actually I found his channel. I, I hope you'll check, uh, you'll check him out. You'll check him out. Check who out. Check who out. Who am I supposed to... Who, who am I checking out? Ten? Does Ten have a YouTube channel? Oh, but I am going to check out Ten's... Uh... Oh, he's a new singer I found. Wait, who's the, who's the new... Who's the new singer? Who's the new singer? I don't think you told me who the new singer was. I'm trying to read to make sure that I'm I'm seeing everything, but I don't I don't see the. Uh... Tell me who the new singer is so I can look at him. I'll I'll check him out too. His name is Mitchell Zai. Zay? Zai? Mitchell Zai. Zai. Okay. Okay. I will check him out. Mitchell Zai. Another thing that annoys me is that uh, some of these uh, <laughs> some of these things that are supposed to be copyright free uh, lo-fi music have gotten my my live streams copyright claim. They claim to be copyright free, but like there might be a song that was played that wasn't, which is very wrong. I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. If it's copyright free, then it should be copyright free all around. Making it hard for me. Okay, that didn't help. Um. Da -da 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 -da. Mitchell, let's see, a new singer. Okay. Mitchell Zinger, Mitchell, Mitchell Z, uh, you two. Why am I on Google? See, that's the problem. I'm on Google, that doesn't make sense. How am I going to find you on? Do you need the link again? Oh, you sent me a link? I didn't even know you sent me a link. Yeah, send me the link. I did not even know you sent me a link. Why set me free didn't work. Concept analysis. Oh, oh. Chojimi came out with a new video. 
Awesome. Awesome. Yes, definitely send me the, the, the link again um, so I can look at it. So if you sent me a link before, they must not have uh, shown up. Yeah, send me that link. I'll I'll check it out. I don't know why. Now the only way that links won't show up. There you go. If you didn't see it uh, this time, I'll send send it to your. Okay. Yeah, send it to my Instagram because I don't know why my live stream is banning links. I guess I have to check that out. There must be uh, something on my on my live stream that's banning links. And I don't know why it's doing that, but I have no choice but to find out why so that I can fix it. Um, cause that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. It should not be doing that. Um, settings. I'm not sure where I need to go, but let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> move channel, you can move your channel to a brand account. Ooh. Delete channel, no. Try new features with YouTube Premium. No, don't have money for it. Um... Billing. Connect apps. Oh, see, now this is nice. This is nice. I would love to do that. I will make a gaming channel one day. Done. I sent it to you. Okay. I'll check it out after the live stream. Live stream is not going to be too long anyway past this point. Because I think we've kind of talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, and we did it successfully. We did it successfully. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about successfully. And I, even though I said at the beginning of the live stream that I didn't really know what I was going to talk about or that I didn't have anything to talk about, I still managed to talk about what I wanted to talk about, which is great. Great for me. Um... And it's nice that I was able to talk about it with someone. So thank you, Shiny's Nuna, for being here on this live stream. I do appreciate you talking with me. Um, soon, don't know how soon, but soon there will be more people on the live streams uh, participating. I'm looking forward to that. I know it's going to happen, um, and I'm anticipating it, but... For now, I am fine with this. Uh, I'm fine with just having a few people on. It's easier to navigate, uh, like, you know, six or seven people talking rather than uh, 50 to 100 to, like, a thousand people or so. But I want that many people on the show because I want us all to talk about. K-pop. I want this to be that kind of place for my viewers. Um, but I feel like it's going to be like a two-way street kind of thing. Um, if people can help me to do that, then it will it will get done and it will be done well. And small beginnings, you know, small beginnings. I don't. I don't. Uh, it, I don't. Not. I don't take it for granted. The small beginnings is what I'm trying to say. I don't take for granted the small beginnings. 
because this is a small beginning right here. I appreciate it. Um, I really do. So, I really appreciate all of y'all so much for showing up. Those who did show up, Shiny's Noon, I know we've been talking a lot. Mama Moonlight uh, blessed, blessed me with Super Chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, I do want to make money on my channel. Obviously, I want to make money on my channel. Um, so, I appreciate that. I appreciate, I appreciate that. It, you know what? It, it Honestly, I'm very honored that my mom sent me a super chat because so often parents don't approve of their children doing things that are outside of the norm like you know but that shows that my mom like financially would would back me up and support me on on a having a YouTube channel that's I don't know that you know it's it's already enough that she shows up on the channel as like a, a co-host or whatever so she supports in that way and I know that she's happy about it but to see your parent do that for you um speaks volumes you know that it means a lot. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the super chat. I really, really do. Um, means a lot. Really does. I Y'all don't know. <laughs> y'all don't know. Means a lot. Um, thank you, Ma, so much. And who else came? Shima. I know you weren't here for a long period of time. You're probably watching and, and doing something else. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so, so much. Um, and of course, Shiny's Nuna, I can, I, so I can talk, talk with you all day about shiny stuff all day, all day. Um, I was actually worried. I will say this for the, the last thing I'm going to say, I was worried when I was editing my shiny Saturday video because the last time I did an editing style like this, where I showed you guys the comparison between <laughs> the live performance and the studio version or whatever. The last time I did something akin to that, so many people got mad at me. So many people got mad at me and thought that I was trying to say that Shiny couldn't sing or that Shiny is not... Um, perfect which the video was about shiny not being perfect by the way perfect in an objective sense because there were people that were like trying to justify them calling shiny perfect by saying things like well they jog they, they learned how to sing uh while performing by jogging they jogged and that, that's why that's how they figured that out that's how and i was trying to say that just because a group jogs while singing does not mean that they are perfect at performing while singing. Perfect in terms of pitch, vocal range, the appropriate vocal range for whatever part they're singing, and all that other stuff, right? Pitch, control, vocal control, all that. I, I think people misunderstood the reason for why Shiny was j jogging while singing. The reason Shiny jogged while they were singing was not to practice singing perfectly while dancing. It was to build stamina so that they would be able to perform while singing. That's what it was for. To build stamina. Endurance. That's why they jogged while singing. It was not to be better at singing. Of course, that could probably, that, that's a, yes, it is to be better at singing while dancing, but not, the, like, the, the singing part is not the main reason why they were doing that. Okay, there's, there's a bigger reason, which was stamina related, because getting winded and losing, you know, losing breath and 
all that stuff that happens live. So they're trying to figure out how to do that while maintaining the stamina necessary to perform. And yes, stem vocals and all that stuff. Uh, even our boys can make mistakes. Uh, they just manage to not make too many. Yes, and I agree with that. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Shiny does not make a lot of mistakes. Okay? But they are not exempt from making mistakes. And some people view Shiny as objectively perfect in the sense that they cannot make mistakes. In fact, the girl that I was talking about on the last live stream literally was telling me that objective perfection is attainable. That was her whole argument. That objective perfection in idol groups is attainable. Newsflash. No, it is not. It is not obtainable. No idol group can do that. No idol group. I don't care what scenario I make. No idol group is exempt from mistakes. And just because an idol group makes a mistake does not mean that the idol group can't sing. That's a coping thing. I feel like that's coping. You're coping with the fact that the idols messed up. And you're trying to justify it by saying, well, they just can't sing then. You're coping. You're coping. To me, you're coping. I tried to use the La Seraphim thing as an example. I'm like, well, you can't just use that as an example of idol groups that can't say, uh, that can't say blah, 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 blah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done talking. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I don't want to rehash that because it was a whole mess and a half. But that said, I do appreciate you guys being here so much. This is just the beginning. We're just getting started. Live live streams will get better and better and better. Um, I'm going to try to find a way to like create a stream will be starting soon kind of screen for the live streams and have music playing in the background and have pictures showing or some or a, or a picture showing to like have give myself time to get ready and give you time to get ready. And we'll do that. I'm going to try to figure out how to do that. Um I'll look on a YouTube video and see how they did it. But uh yeah, that's that's all for today, guys. Don't want this to go any further than it already has. And I need to clear some of my memory on my phone so that it you know my app won't cut off on me like it's been threatening to for the past two weeks. So I'll get I'll get started on that. Thank you guys so much for being with me. I really appreciate all you guys so so much. You make Moonlight Antonio what it is today. And I always say that it is not just my channel, it's our channel. We are bringing reactions, K-pop, and inspiration from under the beautiful moonlight together. That's what we're doing. So I appreciate you guys so much. And, uh, yep, yeah, I will try to do another live stream next weekend. Uh, probably try to do it earlier if I can wake up earlier. I'll, I'll do it earlier. On a Saturday, yes. Uh, between... 10 and 12 o'clock. We'll see how that works. I'll try. If not 10, then 11. If not 11, then 12. I don't want to do it any later than 12. Okay? So we'll see how that works. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. Mama Moonlight, thank you for showing up and showing out for me. And uh, I really appreciate that. Really do. Super Super Chats. Oh, that's my sister. God, I was like, what is that noise? That scared me. Okay, anyway, yeah. I really do appreciate the Super Chats. Um, I really do. It really means a lot. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Love y'all so much. See you on the next one. Sorry, I stopped because I heard a noise and I thought it was uh, the ghost of Christmas past coming, coming to haunt me. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.
Love y'all. See you in the next one.